We call on all fellow members of parliament and the people of South Africa to reject it with the contempt it deserves. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. I will now recognise the Honourable Malema, who will reply to this first reading debate. The Honourable Malema. Thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, uh, and thanks uh, to fellow members of Parliament. We really do not uh, think that there's anything worth responding to, except the fact that the problem with predetermined inputs when there's a debate of this nature, you even come to advance an argument that was never put on the table. There is no any differences ideologically on the relocation of Parliament. Our emphasis is on the accessibility of Parliament and making Parliament work. And therefore, uh, to say members of Parliament will be coming from all over uh, the country still to Pretoria, as if it's a legitimate argument to be advanced, is neither here nor there. Because members of Parliament coming all over from the country into Pretoria or Tswani will be much more easier and accessible than it is now with regard to uh, Cape Town. Now, the argument which everybody seems to be advancing that there are more important issues that are pressing in our country and that the money can be used effectively to improve uh, on those issues than to relocate parliament. It's a disingenuous argument because all of those issues that are happening in our country that are as a result of a dysfunctional uh, democracy. Once parliament is not accessible to the people, uh, politicians do as they wish. That's why someone will come here and say anti-majoritarian, because he wants to use major, majoritarian to conceal corruption, uh, to conceal holding the executive accountable, uh, to conceal people's driven uh, parliament that allows ordinary people who can come into committees, who can come into the full sitting, who can participate fully in any of the process of parliament, and with people looking at us and seeing us uh, without anyone going in between, we will be conscious of the fact that we need to do the right thing because indeed uh, people are watching. It is only the corrupt, it is only those who are loyal to apartheid and colonial pact who will be offended by a call to make parliament be accessible to the people. The fact that we've got challenges as a country should not mean we must never intensify and invest more in making sure that our democracy works. Our democracy and a working democracy, a people-centered democracy, will be able to resolve some of these many other challenges uh, we are confronted with. I mean, products like the last speaker, if we were to get people to participate in parliament and they are conscious of what is really happening in parliament because they've got unlimited access to that parliament. Such characters will not even make it to parliament. They know that a parliament that exposes them to people uh, will actually be a disadvantage to the rod that constitute this parliament that hides behind majoritarian, to hide incompetency, to hide uh, maladministration, to hide favoritism, uh, to hide the corruption that has engulfed our country and the executive. So, Chair, we really don't think that a, a, a genuine argument has been put forward, and we want to commit that even if they can all come together and conspire against the people's centered and people-driven parliament, as long as the EFF is here, you can be rest assured that will dismantle the apartheid colonial pact and will dismantle corruption and will make will take this parliament into the right hands of our people so that they too feel that indeed they make the laws that affect their own lives. They will know that members of the ANC abuse majority to prevent, abuse their majority to prevent parliament from investigating corruption at ESCOM when there is evidence by one of the most senior officials, a former CEO 
that senior officials, including members of cabinet, are stealing money at ESCOM, subjecting all of us to preventable and avoidable electricity blackout. Our people must know that parliament was told by an independent panel chaired by former Chief Justice Sandy Lenovo that there is a prima facie evidence that Mr. Sir Ramaphosa failed to report the theft of his farm, uh, the theft on, on his farm to any police official as required by law. The independent panel report found that Mr. Sir Ramaphosa may have committed a serious violation of Section 34, Subsection 1 of the Prevention and Combating of Corruption Activities Act. Even with this evidence, the ANC once more abuses its majority and rejected any attempt to hold the president accountable. Our people must come to parliament and witness this madness. We will relocate parliament to Twani in our lifetime. The, the time has come and there is nothing anyone can do about it. Whether someone likes it or not, the apartheid pact, the colonial pact, shall be broken by this generation. Whether you agree with it today or tomorrow, our generation will relocate this parliament to Twani and make sure that majority of our people have access to this parliament. The administration and legislature must be put in one place to make the accountability of the executive more easier and to make the legislators to hold the executive accountable more easier. I thank you, the House Chair.